So yeah, well, what you talked about between uh, cancel culture, accountability, and boycotts, where I think the three that you mentioned, um, I, I think are uh, three three good ones to touch on. The difference, in my opinion, or the distinction between cancel culture and the other two, is that boycotts, you know, economic boycotts, for example, right? There's a goal in mind. You want the corporation to change their policy on this or that, right? And then once they do, okay, you can start purchasing their products again. It's all good. And then accountability, you know, the what comes to my mind is the criminal justice system. Um, you know, ideally, you know, uh, theoretically, anyway, there's some due process, right? Innocent until proven guilty, right? The, the you know, accused can defend themselves. They can, you know, do whatever. And then they serve their time or pay their fine or, or, or whatever the, the penalty is. And then they can move on, right? And it's still on the record. Maybe, you know, it's harder to get a job or, you know, what anything like that. But they can still move on with their lives. And the cancel culture, in my opinion, is devoid of any due process, and it, it just, it, it's too arbitrary for the consequences that it has. So it, in my town, actually, I live in Texas now, where I'm from originally, um, there, there are two cases that come to mind. In 2016, 2017, there was a, a guy who worked at the Dollar General, actually down the street from me, who had a MAGA hat. And you could say, maybe you shouldn't wear your politics at work. Right? I think that's kind of fair. But he got fired for that. And then a few years later, there was a, a young woman who got fired from a fast food chain called Whataburger uh, here in Texas because she wore a COVID mask that said Black Lives Matter. And I think those are kind of two, you know, mere examples of cancellation. Now, hopefully they can still get jobs and, you know, they're not, you know, marked for life uh, for this. But more high profile examples, um, you know, Nick Fuentes comes to mind. And I don't want to harp on him too much, but just as an example, I don't think he's ever been accused of a crime. Um, you know, he can't go to open a bank account, right? And you have, you know, especially in the last year or so, all these, you know, college professors and students who are blacklisted because they spoke out against Israel's war crimes, right? That I think is what cancel culture is, right? Is that there's there's no due process, there's no ability for the person to defend themselves. And then there's no period um, and time at which this person is, is free to move on generally. Um, so I think cancel culture, to answer your question, is real and bad, and very distinct from uh, boycotts or accountability, um, because it, it lacks the due process and the ability for the person to pay their debt. If that answers your question. I appreciate so, that. Yeah. As um, you said, you moved back to Texas where you're originally from. Is there anything else you want to say about you know who you are, what you do, what you think, your background, involvement in anything, or you're good? Um, yeah, so I've, I've been politically involved. I actually, I worked on the Bernie campaign in 2020. Um, I've had some major life events. I almost died a couple of years ago. I lost my mom last year. Um, just kind of major events that drew me closer uh, to my faith. I'm Catholic. And that really informs my politics more than anything. Um, like you, I, I think I, I hate both of the, the major parties. And uh, I hate about 99% of those in Congress and those in elected office. Um, that's really the the foundation of my politics and and why um, I believe in and do the things that I believe and do.